Today we're going to be talking all about Thronebreaker. We actually have one leak. Stay options, um, away. Consequences of it. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome to A Round of Gwent Episode 2. I'm Ash and I'm joined by co-host Pavel Borja. Hey guys. And today we're going to be talking all about Thronebreaker, which is the brand new single player campaign coming to Gwent. So today we have Matt and Seb who are going to be talking all about this single player mode and hopefully you'll learn something new about Thronebreaker and what it holds. And the first question is, what is Thronebreaker for those who don't know? So Thronebreaker is the single player mode for Gwent. Uh, it introduces the story of Queen Meave of Lyria and Rivia. And basically it tells the story of how she faced the Nilfgaardian invasion during the Second Nilfgaardian War. Um, it introduces a lot of new features such as the map that you're going to explore. Uh, it introduces the army building uh, feature. Um, so you will travel the lands and you will build up your army and face different challenges. The character you play as is, is Queen Maeve, a very kind of pivotal character within the Witcher lore. For the hardcore fans, you will know her from They'll uh, know her for sure. a certain... So yeah, you basically play as Queen Maeve and you uh, explore certain locations within the Witcher universe. Uh, a lot of them will be familiar. Um, a lot of really cool kind of new places that people will have heard about before but never seen. Um, so that was kind of really exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, so when is this uh, this kind of storyline set in relation to the Witcher universe that we know? It's happening before the events of the games. Uh, so like I said, it's a second Nilfgaardian invasion and uh, yeah, it, it's set uh, somewhere in between the books. So how is this single player mode going to interact with the, the multiplayer Gwent? So as you explore the lands, you will find things that will enhance your single player deck. So you will uh, recruit new units, you will find items, currencies and so on. But also you will find a premium card for, uh, well, set of premium cards for the multiplayer collection of yours. Uh, these will be characters that you will meet throughout the Thronebreaker campaign. One of the really cool things about the map and, and the new cards, obviously, is we get to kind of um, place them in certain locations uh, as little secrets that you can find to kind of encourage exploration. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the map isn't necessarily, we're not making The Witcher. Um, we're making, uh, we're kind of taking that universe and, and adding a Gwent spin on it. Mm -hmm. I know uh, that the meme of the the Witcher was a RPG with a, a, a Gwent card game in it. And uh, now we're making the Gwent card game with a mini RPG. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of cool. Other way around this time. Um, from your perspective as, as a level designer, you get a map already drawn by an artist and you have to kind of place things around. Do you have a say as what do they have to change, implement to make it a little bit different? So, yeah, I mean, so the kind of the way it works is I, I work with Matt mm -hmm. and, uh, and our other writer, Kuba, um, and they basically come up with like the, the plot points and, the, and all the stories and the narrative. And then I basically like kind of take all that information and go, all right, well, what's the where are these locations going to be on the map? On oh, maps, because mm. um, we're more than one. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, it's basically placing them kind of what all the main quests are, where the secondary quests are. Um, we have loot in the game, so that's kind of mm -hmm. ties into something I'm sure Matt will talk about with the camp in a bit. Um, but yeah, it's kind of figuring out how, how it works and, and the pacing and all that. Mm -hmm. And our artists are like super talented. So when we when I come up with a location or an idea for a location, not the layout, I send it off to them mm -hmm. and uh, they make me really, really nice assets. And yeah. nice. So what kind of art style can we expect in this single player? I would say it's similar to the um, to the storyboards that you might have seen in The Witcher 3. So the, basically the cutscenes that told you about the consequences of your actions, the ones you could see on the loading narrated. screens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Those that the Dandelion narrated, actually. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We have a different narrator this time. Yes, we have a different narrator this time. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't want to divulge the information yeah, yeah, yeah. of who he is yet. <laughs> Uh, it's a little bit Keep of mystery. Spoiler free. <laughs> exactly. I'd be curious to see the fun kind of fun theories as to yeah, figuring yeah, out yeah. Who, who that is. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I think he's pretty good, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. it's nice all tease. gonna be that hand-drawn style then. Yeah. Yes, exactly. So everything is hand-drawn, it's animated of course, so you can expect different things moving on the map, different nice effects that, you know, bring life to it. But in general, it's like this very nice, uh, you know, hand-drawn. Yeah, I mean, the, the hand-drawn element, especially with like the, the levels and the maps and the areas you go, is I don't think we can undersell this enough, like this, 
the amount of work that it takes to hand draw everything, mm. like even the ground itself is, is, is hand drawn. Yeah. Um, that takes a lot of effort and a lot of talented people and it's, it, it looks fantastic. Yeah, definitely. So the first story which we're going to encounter is Queen Meves. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously this is based in the Northern Realms faction. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see any other future styles, like different styles? The general idea is to make a campaign for each faction. So each of these will have a different protagonist. So yeah, in Northern Realms we play as Queen Meve, but in different ones you'll, you'll play as different characters. And what's really cool about this is that every one of those characters, you know, has a different approach to choices and consequences. So we can present you different kinds of choices. And also because those factions are so vastly different, uh, we need to think on introducing new features and uh, building the map differently. Because um, obviously uh, if you're a queen, you can travel from town to town by the road and so on. Um, if you're a leader of Skoyatel or if you like, if you're leading a horde of monsters, obviously, uh, you know, you wouldn't do Can't that. So we need to think yeah. of <laughs> exactly different things of, mm -hmm. that you can do. So the games are primarily going to be expanding on characters which we know and have heard of, but had kind of minor roles before. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're introducing a lot of characters. Some of them you might know from the books, some of them you might know from the games, mm -hmm. but we're introducing a lot of new characters that we have designed from the scratch for this. Awesome. What about the tools that you use to tell a story? Is like, is, is it, will it have cutscenes, like dialogues? How is it going to be planned out? Because we know there will be a map and you'll have a character that you move around. But what about kind of telling the story in the background? Yeah, I mean, we, we have cinematic cutscenes, right? And uh, like Matt said before, they're, they're very much in the style of the stuff that people have seen in The Witcher. Uh, familiarity hey, you, um, But then we have also cutscenes where... Your flowers. <laughs> Stay away from my daughter. Wow. Well, it's getting rowdy here. She's a we, yeah, we have like characters who interact with each other. We have dialogue Stay options. Stay um, away. Some consequences of, it. of her. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> so it's going to be a like non-linear story with lots of different options. People. Can yeah, choose. I mean the, the the story the story is very much linear, right? But there there are branches off, so yeah. you you know. Well, I mean, I would say that uh, the choices you make impact the story heavily because you know you can have different outcomes. Some characters may die. Some characters might leave your army because they don't agree with what we're doing. Um, also, the maps themselves. They aside from the main storyline, there are a lot of side quests that you can find. And, you know, it's kind of like a choice of how do you want to explore the map as well. And depending on if you explore the, you know, it, it, the entirety of it, you might or might not meet some characters as well. Yeah, I mean, I think, like, for when I was playing The Witcher, a big part of the uh, fun for me was the exploration element. So we kind of wanted to capture that um, kind of, oh, well, what happens if I go off the, the main path and, and, and go and have a look at this, this uh, point of interest over here? Something cool might happen. Um, so we are, yeah, we have a lot of cool things. The side quests themselves, do they tell like a story that's kind of inside or is it something totally like separate? So they are, uh, so every map will have a distinct mood about it and it will contain a different set of side quests that tell the story, the general story of this map. And they are strictly connected to the main storyline in terms of, you know, you cannot disconnect it from the ongoing big events that happen, right? But they do tell smaller stories that add more detail and flavor to the world. Oh, so really I cool. think it's really cool because, yeah, you can see, for example, like life of simpler folk and, you know, yeah. some different situations that you wouldn't encounter in the main storyline. And, and like we said about the characters, if you, you can just bypass them and never, and never see some of the characters. So that was, yeah. that was all kind of, also kind of a cool element. Yeah. So this um, Thronebreaker is going to be obviously playing as a queen. So in that you have to build up your army. Could you tell us a bit about, more about that? So the idea is that you travel the lands, you uh, gather recruits from different villages which want to join your war effort, depending on your choices, of course. Um, then you can enter at any point of the uh, exploration, you can enter a camp, you can set up a camp. And in this camp, you can kind of build it up like, in, like you know, your, your buildings in uh, Heroes of Might and Magic. Um, building up these buildings will unlock uh, access to specific units, mm -hmm. which you can also uh, recruit using these recruits. And, you know, the, you can also equip different items on your character in there. You can uh, interact with your companions that you have joined you throughout your adventure. And this uh, has effect on the, on the single player. Yes. Right? And on units, you mean, of course, cards, right? Yeah, so yeah. Can, uh, yeah. Of, course, yeah. of course, all the battles in the game play out in the card game, since it's Gwent. So yeah. all the units that you train, all the characters that join you, all the items you find, those are all cards. 
and as you improve the camp, you get basically access to better cards and you improve your deck. Uh, your single player deck. I mean, that kind of ties in with, with, so we have a loot system in the game, so as you wander around the map, you'll find loots that you can take, um, and that basically, yeah, it ties in, so you gain money, therefore you can buy, upgrade your camp, and therefore you get access to better units. Yeah, and also gameplay-wise, it's a little bit different in single player than comparing it to multiplayer, which has to be like super balanced, but here, uh, the design team, they could go a little bit crazy, let's say. Yeah, so I mean, we, we, we kind of have our main quests and then we have our secondary quests and then we have kind of these little puzzles which we've dotted around the place um, which uh, they are literally like designers just kind of having fun right mm -hmm. so so the map puzzles as opposed to like they, they in, are in they are a gwent They're, they are like a gwent oh, okay, fight yeah. um so but specific they, cars need to be used yeah oh, played in a specific yeah. order in order mm -hmm. to trigger something right but it, it adds a lot more variety and uh, and and they're pretty fun yeah. But on top of that, <coughs> the thing you mentioned, so even the normal normal fights, they have very custom built decks. So basically we can play with new abilities that wouldn't work in multiplayer, things that would be OP in multiplayer basically. <laughs> and here That's nice. we do it on purpose because it's a new challenge for you, you know, to fight against AI. Yeah, yeah. I think that was one of the something that like people loved about the Witcher 3 Gwent was like True. they were overpowered. So yeah. Mm -hmm. That's kinda cool. Yeah, no, that sounds really cool. So, uh, in terms of the team that you have working on this, um, mm -hmm. is it similar? Is it a similar composition to people who worked on The Witcher, or is it lots of new people working on this, or, mm. or how how is it being run? I would say it's mixed. So some some people uh, used to work on The Witcher, like myself oh. and some of our writers, and we have a lot of new people as well. But all of our team are uh, very talented. Don't move. Yeah, yeah we have, we have a mix of people. So I I had the benefit. Whoa! Bullseye! That's a wow. good one! Wow! That was a good shot. That's a good one! That was a good shot. That's a good um, shot. But yeah, we, we have a mix, right? So like, I got Matt works on The Witcher 3, whereas I got the uh, <laughs> chance to just play it at home and, and enjoy it like a lot of the fans did, so yeah. that was kind of cool. Okay, cool. So we'll see some continuity with the new flavour, the new Gwent flavour. Definitely. So we talked a bit about the story and how there are lots of different options. Um, and you can go down different paths and meet different people and get different cards. Um, are players going to have the option to be able to replay this so they can get the full experience and get all the cards? Yes, the general idea is that uh, in one playthrough you won't see all outcomes, so it is advisable to play again to see different situations because we have a lot of choices and consequences that really matter in the, in the single player story. Yeah. I think that Adalbert will have something to say about that. Choose, they say. Whatever you wish. The world's your maelstrom, its center, your navel. But those with power conjure an illusion. Say choose to those who have no power. They make them seem such trivial things. But to choose is to take responsibility for the consequences which are rarely considered and certainly never known. Choice, then success or failure, though in truth neither is singularly itself. And each road taken is a road bypassed. Then another and another. And on the journey goes into the infinite loop. The infinite loop which is which is madness. The infinite loop which is to be feared, for the infinite loop is a vortex into the void, into darkness. <laughs> That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so that's all we have time for today to talk about Throne Breaker, but now we're going to move on to our community corner and look at some creations which have been submitted. Welcome to the community corner. As always, we have really cool fan art. Thank you for sending them in. If you want to have your uh, fan art featured on one of the episodes, just go send them to fanart at cdprojectred.com. And yeah, I'll be checking them out. And thank you for the entries that we got this time. First one, you see Geralt playing Gwent, of course. What else could he be doing? There's Priscilla in the back. We have Dandelion here. And pretty much it's put in a perspective like you're the opponent. So it puts you um, in a really cool spot. It's kind of anime-like, I would yeah, say. Yeah, it has this yeah, anime feel to it, yeah. And it's by Orpheline, she's, she's from France. We actually worked with her on a couple of French events, so yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really cool to see all the art submissions we've had since the first episode. Yeah. They've all been you know, Gwent themed. Yeah, they started pouring just, yeah. just after we, we had the first uh, episode Lots of new Gwent artwork. Yeah, I love seeing those as well. 
Yeah. And the community is super talented. Yeah, the community is super talented and super, super cool. Moving on to the next song, where we're talking about cool stuff. This is a custom-made Gwent board, but it oh, wow. represents Gwent as it is now in the game. Mm -hmm. And you have all the units, and if you look closely, you have Lesto there, and there's like custom-made counters showing how many points he got after destroying units. Which Did is you see really these really stands cool. for the cards as well? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. And there's deck boxes and all that also. Mm -hmm. It's really, really awesome at yeah. some point. And this one is by Andre and it's, it's crazy. So next one, uh, as you can see, is Dandelion and he's reenacting his card. Like, on the spot is perfect. Uh, if you, you've probably seen the guy many times. He's known as Vigilant Cosplay. Uh, the costume was made by Corneline and the photo was shot and edited by Steve Kovapanna. It's very accurate. Yeah, yeah. it's on That's point. That's a good imitation. It's, it's on point. The wheel is better, right? <laughs> I love the attention to detail and the flying vegetables and loaves yeah. of bread. The panties and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know Dandelion. This is really cool. It also features, uh, of course, Dandelion, since we like the character a lot. Um, and you have him playing Gwen. He's, I think he's cheating a bit. Yeah, he's... I think he's just been caught by Leto. Yeah. I wonder if Foltis is nervous being next to Leto in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. True. <laughs> if you know your lore, yeah. Of mm. course, he probably is. This one's by uh, Tony's art, and it's really, really cool. Looks like he has an Igni up his sleeve. <laughs> yeah. Igni, I think, also Leto is mm -hmm. uh, dropping out of there. Like he's ahead of the game. <laughs> <laughs> he's ahead of the game. Yeah, he's OP for sure. All right, and the last one, which I really like, it's the mm. one I like the most, is because Gwen is a game of two armies battling it out. And you see the armies, of course, fighting, and but you see also the, the players, and the players yeah. are up in the sky. And the one looks, of them looks like Dijkstra. Yeah, I think, I think it's yeah. Dijkstra up in the sky oh, playing there. Yeah. The monsters yeah. faction. I think this, I think yeah, all of them all. I think this one, I, I like yeah. the monsters. And a little it's, detail I liked as well is the fact that you can see a wraith in there. I'm not sure if it's a noon wraith or a night wraith, but mm. say a card which isn't in the game at the moment. But I don't know. Maybe they know things that we don't. <laughs> there are wraiths. And there's a decoy there as well, which is very cool. Decoy, very important card. Mm -hmm. And that's not all that we have for this episode because we actually have one leak. Oh, that really? yeah, yeah, or even more than one. Oh, there we go. But like in all seriousness, we actually have a leak. The real leak is a new card art that we're going to show you today, and it's Oriana. If you play The Witcher's League, Blood and Wine, you will know this character for sure. And yeah, it's by Brian Sola. Uh, one last thing. Don't forget to send your play of the month. Uh, go to www.playgwent.com slash P-O-T-M, so play of the month, and send us your plays of the month. Of course, we got already a lot of them, but the more the better. Uh, the best ones we'll try to feature on our next episode. And also, while you're here and listening to me, uh, it would be great if you can ask your questions or maybe if you have ideas for episodes down here. And in the next Community Corner, we'll just talk about them. Okay, so that's all we have time for today. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming and joining us in the studio. And we'll catch you in the next episode very soon. The infinite loop is to be feared, for the infinite loop is the vortex. These are the vortex into the void, into the darkness. Okay, I'm ready.